We are Evelyn and Ferenc. Follow us on our adventures as we share our overland trips from all around the world. We are about 2,500 kilometers from Alaska and we're going to turn left here to Route 40 and then join the Alaska Highway. Cannot wait. With its almost 1400 miles length through some of North America's most extreme environments, the Alaska Highway was one of the most ambitious construction projects of the United States and Canada, and it was built to defend the continent. Almost. <laughs> Sorry about putting it on top of somebody else's, but this sign is full. Today, it is considered one of the most scenic highways in Canada, so no surprise that we were really eager to see it. Beginning in Dawson Creek, British Columbia, and winding northwesterly through BC into the Yukon, and then onto the US border, the road passes from the Rocky Mountains to subarctic alpine tundra to the jagged peaks of Kluani National Park and Reserve, before ending at Delta Junction, Alaska. Its history, and the reasons for its construction are fascinating. From Alaska, the Aleutian Islands stretched out invitingly toward a shrewd and daring enemy. The great Japanese air and naval base at Paramushiro was only 750 miles from Attu. Attu was only 1,200 miles from the mainland of Alaska. And Japs in Alaska would be a direct threat to the west coast of America and also to the interior. If our shipping lanes could be interrupted, Alaska might fall. The situation called for immediate action. Dawson Creek, where the Alaska Highway Zero Mile is located, wasn't much more than a 600-person rail terminal when Canada and the US first began discussing plans to build a road connecting the lower 48 states with Alaska in 1929. Until then, Alaska was only accessible by boat from the US mainland, and so the isolated territory seemed especially at risk against potential Japanese attack. Several route options were considered, but the events of Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941 made decision-making much quicker. Three months after the attack, Thousands of US troops and a huge amount of heavy equipment arrived by rail at the tiny town of Dawson Creek to begin one of the US's most expensive construction projects of World War II. The construction of the road was as unusual as the terrain it was built on. They were working so fast, when a bulldozer, grader or truck broke, it was pushed out of the way and they kept going. Some 16,000 American and Canadian soldiers and civilians were working through some of the region's coldest temperatures on record. Drinking water froze solid, diesel thickened, and ice could lock up the wheels of a truck if it stood still for more than a few seconds. Men had to fight swamps, rivers, ice and cold along with mosquitoes, flies and grizzly bears. Even today, maintenance of the road is quite difficult as some sections were built on unstable subarctic ground. Incredibly, it only took eight months to build the Alaska Highway. With the extra daylight of the midnight sun, crews worked double shifts in the summer. Crossing 129 rivers and 8,000 mountain streams, the highway was built in sections. 
This meant there were a few places where the builders met and linked their sections of road together. The opening ceremonies took place at a scenic spot called Soldier's Summit in what's now Kluani National Park on 20th of November 1942 and the road opened to military traffic. So it was originally known as the Alaska Military Highway or ALCAN but its initial military purpose began to fade from memory as soon as the route opened to the public after the war in 1948. From there the legend only grew. The story about an impossible to build highway that could take visitors across some of the roughest and most beautiful land imaginable. From Dawson Creek the highway winds west into the northern Rockies, first passing farmland, forests and fast flowing rivers. The boreal forests craggy rocks and sparkling jade lakes of the Yukon form an incredible panorama. Not only the incredible views, but also the abundant wildlife makes us feel very excited. We have a road trip game where spotting a wild animal is worth one point, and if we're honest, Evelyn still needs to improve her bear spotting skills. Between spotting wildlife, we are checking out abandoned service stations that once must have been part of the lifeline of this road. When it's time to find a camp spot for the night, the nature surrounding the Alaska Highway makes the job incredibly easy. Uh, we've just seen a little side road from the Alaska Highway, from the main Alaska Highway towards the river and it, we checked it on the map and it looks promising from the map and from what we've seen on the road. So if it looks really good and we like the area, which I doubt we won't, we will stay there for the night. We had, a, we had other plans, uh, like sort of planned out where we're going to stop and where we're going to camp. It looks like this area is just too nice to just go past it and uh, and we're gonna see that other place tomorrow so it's not like we're gonna miss out on that The spot that we found doesn't come short of being perfect. We are totally alone, we are right next to a pristine clean river and there is firewood around.
Evelyn makes an effort to put a couple of hours of training in, whereas I'm using the excuse of looking for firewood and making a fire for not doing any exercise. We have a brilliant evening with dinner cooked over the campfire, a nice glass of wine and a sunset that lasts for hours. Since we are getting closer to the Arctic and it's June, it doesn't actually get dark during the night. We're going to go to Mancho Lake where we're going to do some hiking and after that some hot spring that we're going to visit. So it should be a great day. The trail we want to hike on is actually this way. Um, this cloud doesn't look that good but otherwise there's blue skies around. We're gonna have a quick snack now and then go hiking. Let's go hiking. Trying to avoid our boots getting wet, it takes us an hour just to cross the small but fast flowing creek. It's all part of the fun though, and we are off to hike on the original tracks of the Alaska Highway. Mancho Lake is an incredible sight. Some of the surrounding peaks reach more than 2,000 meters. The jade green color of the lake is due to the presence of copper oxide leach from the bedrock underneath. With the mountains in the background, it is easily one of the most beautiful places we've ever been to. This is the old Alaska Highway Trail from Lake Mancho. I'm guessing it's because it used to be the track of the old Alaska Highway. Obviously now it's being taken back by nature. But yeah, I have to actually check if that assumption is correct. But I, why, why else would it be called the old Alaska Highway Trail? I think that's the reason. We're trying to talk a lot or even sing something stupid just so that, but that's what we read like, against bears that's the first line of defense you can do make some noise make the bear be aware that you're coming now yesterday we've seen six bears from the car so that was okay but i don't know if we want to meet a bear here right now do we no not a grizzly especially not a grizzly especially not a grizzly if grizzlies are around here probably are okay we also have a bear spray actually I don't really want to use it and I think it's very rare where somebody has to use it but I don't think we would want to hike here without one. Yep. So we just arrived to the Liard Hot Springs. I'm quite excited about this experience because I have never been before in a hot spring. I'm just really curious how does it look like, how does it feel to go into a warm water 
yeah we have thermal waters in hungary but it's just not the same like this yeah it's a swamp <laughs> it's not the whole spring yet A lot of mosquitoes. A lot of around. mosquitoes. Yeah, we shouldn't tell them about them about the mosquitoes. No mosquitoes at all. There is not a single mosquito around. Liard River Hot Springs is the second largest natural hot springs in Canada. It is a natural river of hot water rather than a spring fed man made pool. Although I am not a big fan of hot springs, it feels very special and relaxing to just sit in the hot water and enjoy the sunset. The park where it's located contains a warm water swamp and a boreal forest. Moose and bear sightings are frequent and are common hazards in summer months. Moose often feed in the warm water swamps and we were quite lucky to witness a beautiful animal just calmly having lunch right in front of us. Moose can be quite dangerous so we rather wait until it calmly walks away while we are eaten alive by mosquitoes. Sadly, two lives were lost at this very spot due to a rare black bear attack in 1997. The last few days have been an absolute breeze. The truck was working well, we have seen incredible scenery, but when you had so many easy days of travel, you just know that there will be more difficult days on the horizon. 